I love modeling lava. What is not to love about something that glows? It's brilliant, it's so much fun. And you know, it isn't just orange. You can get it in blue, red, and yellow too. Now, I may have taken some of those color combinations from the Clone Wars, but I do love it. I am making a light up lava board with 36 tiles this size, so it's three foot by three foot. But before I spend all my time painting those tiles, I wanted to practice and I wanted to do some different color lava. Now I've done lava before, it's fun. And I designed these tiles, there's some lava pools, things thrown in it, lava rivers. They're all part of my next Kickstarter, which is all things lava. And I started off by painting it with fluorescent paint. That's what I did last time. It's really great paint because it looks lit up in the day and when it's a light up board, it looks great when lit from below too. Though actually, if I'm honest, I'd miss this stage next time. I don't think I particularly needed it, but more of that in a minute. Now this whole thing had a number of challenges. The first of which, how do you prime 3D prints to paint on with acrylic paints when they're translucent tiles so the light will come through? The answer is clear matte varnish. I've got to say, I was a bit intimidated at this point. I didn't really know what to do next. And it was the cracks that were causing me issues and the lava, and basically that's the whole tile, isn't it? So, hmm. So I had to start somewhere. So I'm mixing paint for 36 tiles. That's why I'm doing so much. And this is warm gray and black. Two great colors to create lava tiles. I'm a huge fan of warm gray. It's got a hint of beige in it. So I'm wet brushing this on. It's, it's kind of a dry brush, but I'm not taking most of the paint off. And the reason for that is I don't want it to go in the cracks. That's why I'm using such a big brush. I want those to be colored differently, perhaps a ready orange color. But I do need the top of this tile, which is the ground, to be cooled lava. So I need it to be this dark gray. And the easiest way to do that is just to paint it with a big brush. I did swap to a smaller brush though to do the edges. Cracks, most of them are just gonna be painted the color of the ground. The one that isn't is the Mustafa board. And I've already spray painted that, but it's the wrong color. So painting all the cracks on the other tiles gets rid of two problems. One, I need them painted. Two, I don't want any light coming out of them because I don't want them to glow. I use the dark gray for that, but to be honest, it's a bit dark, especially for the sullust one, which is the dark red lava. <sighs> I just went over it with warm gray and dry brushed on more and more color until they were about right and weren't just flat, boring tiles. But to be honest, I was struggling to get the brush into all of the cracks and details. So I thought to myself, I'll put a dark wash on and it will flow into all the bits that I'm not getting to with the brush. And this is a black acrylic wash. I can go and just give another dry brush at the end if there's any mess on top. Job's good. But it wasn't. It really wasn't. Now I didn't put the wash anywhere near the top of the lava surface, but the wash flowed between the layer lines and came out and the next morning, my lava had black in it. And this is why you experiment. Really, if I'd done this on a main board, I'd have been really upset. But for these, I'm gonna paint them a bit more anyway on the lava. I just learned to live with it. Now these look a bit anemic anyway, but when you put a flashlight under it, boy, they just don't look dark enough. So I definitely need to fix that. But before I go any further, I need to make those bases so I know what the lighting's like. These are 3D pin bases with little mini clips that go in. It's the open lock system, clip together sides. Everything's Star Wars themed and sprayed black. A key element of a light up diorama is the lighting. And for this, I'm using LED strips. The first couple were really simple. I've got a roll of LED strip with a USB attached. They're five volt strips. I can literally just put that straight into a socket, into the wall through a USB socket, and I'm done. I don't need to solder or anything. So all I had to do was wend it back and forth, which isn't that easy because they're quite stiff and you don't want to bend them on a resistor or an LED because you might mask them. So all I had to do was use the self-adhesive sticky side, put them back and forth in a zigzag and job done. You can cut them to length 
wherever there's a break mark and there's a little mark with a pair of scissors shown so that you know where to cut them. But bitter experience tells me that self-adhesive is not enough. Go over it, especially the loops with hot glue and make sure that everything's well stuck in place. Otherwise, in a few weeks time, it might all have popped off. And the no solder method works really well, but then you have the end of the roll, which is wasted unless you're happy to solder. So if you're happy to solder, I recommend putting on something like a micro USB port, which you can then plug a USB cable in, still five volt, easy enough then to plug into the wall. So that's what I did here. You can also join up your pieces together as here to not waste it. Hmm, this looks really good, but I do need longer leads. I can't reach the camera very well. I'm using artist acrylic paints. I've got cheap acrylics in the primary colors, you know, purple, stuff like that. And I've also got fluorescent paints and I mix them all in together. The fluorescent gives it a bit of a glow when it's not lit, which is probably actually most of the time. I added a bit of water just to make sure it would flow well. I'm in two minds whether I'll do the dark grey dry brush first on the main tiles because I ended up going over this again. But this is a dark red, orange crack colour. My iPhone flashlight was a handy checker for any missed spots and no matter how hard I tried, I did miss a lot of spots. On went a violet colour for the Lola Sayu base, which is purple and yellow, it's very striking. And a dry brush over the top of the wash where it had been a bit dirty just to clean it up. And Solist still needed to go a bit brighter, some more dry brushing on that before cleaning up the edges with a bit of the dark grey. And I'd been putting it off, painting the lava. This is just a test piece. It's actually quite hard to do a big piece compared to a pool, which is smaller. And I've mixed up a yellow, it's just yellow acrylic paint, yellow fluorescent paint, thinned down quite a bit so it will sink into all the bottom because lava is lighter on the bottom and darker on the top where it's cool. Looking at the photos, this lava is actually more orange than anything else and it's quite splodgy rather than sort of streaky. There's yellow patches where it's going over waterfalls and the skiffs and things, but mostly it's orange. So I probably should have started with a more orange base but I put loads of orange on and kept going with it and kept adding more. And then I went darker and added a brown, kind of a dark brown orange to show the cooling lava on the top. But put it on the light box and it looks white. It doesn't look yellow at all. And I've painted it yellow twice now. <sighs> I need a brainwave. Straight away I went more orange with these, diluted it down quite a bit and put it on there. And the reason for that is I don't think they're going to be disturbed. I don't think the yellow lava effect would be showing through as much. But I still left one spot because you don't want it to look boring. I've got to be honest, it's easy to breezily say in a video, oh and I just painted it up. But I wasn't happy with this lava one. It took me a lot of feeling and adding multiple layers of the different colours to get the feel for what I wanted with the lava. But eventually I felt like I was getting there. So I dry brushed on the dark grey again and it really does sell the lava effect that it's cooled on top. The Lola Sayu lava really doesn't get much brighter than a kind of brownie orange. So that's what I put on. I'm going to call this technique wet brushing. You want a bit of paint on there because you want to get it down into the troughs, but you also need it to be sort of dry enough to catch the tops. So I went round, just put on some brown splodges. That was all it was, nothing particularly technical. Mind you, I did put the most brown over where the black wash had leaked under the lava. I did the same with the sullust black patches, and this is the dark crack red. I went up the edge a little just to put in the light that would be glowing from this lava and kept checking how deep it was, whether the colours were right with my special friend, the iPhone flashlight. I also wet blended in some orange just to give it a bit of variety. Likewise, blue lava got a bit of blue fluorescent paint on it. You can see the problem here though, that the black areas have still got white spots in them when the light comes through. Hmm. Did you know that blue lava actually exists on Earth? This isn't something I made up. Google it and you'll see what I mean. 
but is made from sulfur burning. So unlike the other lava that gets darker on top because it's cooling and so it goes darker, this is actually lighter on top because it's burning and a flame gets brighter. So I mix some white into the fluorescent blue I was using and dry brush the top. I also needed to paint up all the things that were in the lava pools. So there's a skiff that went on the Mustafar board that got various shades of brown. It was mixed from the lava colours on the palette, so it's black, orange and red, basically. The sinking crane got a red-black coat and the barrel sludge brown. But all the tiles, they've still got spots that are reading as white when you put them on the light boxes. All of them. I left my subconscious to mull that over while I finished off these bases. Each of the cables is different. So I've got these little power socket plugs that I put into a special piece. It's a corner piece. I had to print them and um, swap them out. And then I just can slot them in place and click them. I do need to add hot glue then on the inside, especially with the micro USBs to secure them. But I've got a really robust neat looking backplate with silver highlighting and everything. I'd originally planned to use this plate packing material as a kind of diffusion layer around the outside, but I felt it looked a bit sparkly still. I didn't feel it was quite the effect I was after. So in the end, I cut strips of just white copy paper and put those in. I used a little bit of hot glue to secure them in place and I got the effect I was after. I just worry that now I've blocked off the air circulation, which was kind of the point of the grills to start with. Oh well, time will tell how hot it gets. And then, when I should have been sleeping, I got it. What I need to do is colour the light. Now the final um, LEDs in the next board, they're going to be RGB and they're going to be flashing colours. But these ones aren't, they're just white. And I have this little pack of cellophane. And I was feeling like, oh, I wish I'd printed it in orange translucent PLA, you know, I was regretting printing all these. I mean, it wouldn't have worked for the blue one, would it, orange PLA? But I've got these packs of cellophane and they come in yellow, orange, red and blue. And it makes such a difference. Every time there's a light leak now, it's the colour I want it to be. So all of those white spots have disappeared. It's amazing. It is the answer. I still had a couple of tweaks though. I put on the fascias at the top to hide the unsightly clip holes. Pet hate of mine, clip holes showing. And just because I painted the purple quite strongly as a very thick straight line, I spray painted the edge of the Lola Sayu lava with some fluorescent yellow to act as a sort of reflected light thing. It actually comes out looking more green. Hmm. And just to say, you can use UV light because there are fluorescent colours in here. It may look better on the blue, but it surprisingly worked well on most of them, apart from the Lola Sayu yellow that kind of went green. So here we are, four experiments on lava. They look completely different in daylight, UV light, when they're lit, when it's dark. They're an ever-changing diorama. And coming up next is three square feet of lava terrain. There's lava, there's lava factories, there's lava waterfalls, all coming in the future. So I hope you like lava because it's also going to be a Kickstarter at the end of September. And if you want to sign up for that, the link will be down below. So all I need to do now is remind you to subscribe, hit the bell button and come back for the next video.